Remember our story about the incredible caves that one man dug underneath his home in Kensington? Back in the 1940s, Glenn Havens, that's him on the left, dug 700 feet of tunnels and rooms. Art Gonzalez bought the home years later and showed us what was down there. Now this is uh, one of the eight or nine chambers that are down here. Actually, there's nine rooms. And nine rooms. Nine rooms. It's a funny obsession, this digging thing. Glenn Havens was just fascinated with digging. So it was a hobby. He wasn't nuts. No, he wasn't nuts. Well, I don't think he was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever he was, he wasn't alone. Just a few miles away above Montezuma Road, there's a canyon that reminds George Kapitas of when he was a kid. It does. The last time I was here was in 1955. But today, George has come back. Back to see if he can find the entrance to Young's Caves, sometimes called Alvarado Caves. Go back to 1955. And there was a little dirt trail. We would follow that all the way up here to about this area right in here. Where there isn't any more, but there used to be a way into this amazing network of man-made caves below Alvarado Estates. A community newsletter from 40 years ago says the entrances were blasted shut by police, no trace nowadays. But George wonders, unseen, underground, could those caves from his childhood still exist? I just think the whole thing has been lost to history, but I know it's there. I've got pictures to prove it. Taken with a brownie hawkeye lit by a flash bulb, you had to crawl through part of the cave until it got big enough to walk in, and it was big, connected by long tunnels, he says. The cave had, uh, as I remember, about uh, seven rooms and three floors. Over the years that the caves were still visible, sometimes there'd be a newspaper article about them. An old-time resident of Alvarado Estates, now gone, once spoke with Mr. Young and wrote down what he remembered. Turns out he was a scientist and ordained minister who had tuberculosis, and he thought that the digging would be good for his health. He was a Sunday school teacher and author, perhaps a little eccentric, but not really a loner. Of course, the kids didn't know that. Just heard that he was a hermit, wanted to get away. Maybe Young's Caves are still down there. If so, there's no way to tell. Closed off as what police call an attractive nuisance decades ago. But to 1950s kids like George Capitas, they were a part of growing up in a simpler time in the college area. And quite often I come up and down Montezuma, I always think about it though. I always look that way. Thinking back to what for him is something just unforgettable about San Diego.